Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how to set up your magnified scopes. So in this video, I want to work with the actual reticles themselves and show you how to work with those. So we're going to go to the reticle that we're using. And this is, again, purely for magnified optics. So what I want to do for testing purposes is drag this out. And I want to make it so I can easily access all of these without getting it blocked in the view. Okay, so I hit play, I aim, and I press F8. So basically you have a couple different controls. So you have like the outer ring blur, and of course it's going to reset it. So the way I can fix that to where I can test with it is set the unchecked disable when not aiming, and I'll set it to 60. So that way it stays smooth. So there we go, let's go back to it. And here we have our optic. So basically we have the outer ring blur. So if I bump this up to like 10, you can see the outer side, it gets blurry and blurry. It just adds kind of like a little bit of an effect to it. Then you have the render target. This is which render target this is actually supposed to be using. So this is supposed to match up with the one that you have in your scene capture component right here. Next up, we have workings for the eye box. So right now, let me get to the right. That's about where the edge is going to be. So we have the eye box diameter. So I'll revert that back to zero. And if I shrink this, you can see it shrinks the size of the eye box. So I've got 100, 50, and then back to the default. So what was it 175? Yeah, 175. So that's what that controls. Then you have the eye box range, so kind of how far back you can go. So here I'm back relatively far. Beep that down to like negative 5,000. If I beep it up to 100, you can see it's completely changed the result. That's the default. Then we have the shadow sharpness. I did not mean to click that. Let me click something behind it so it's not in the way. So this is the outer shadow. So if I shadow, dark, yeah, shadow sharpness at 5, if I change it to 1, you can see it gets very blurry. If I change it to 50, it is super sharp. So I like leaving it at the default. Five, I feel like it's a nice compromise. It's not super blurry. But you can go less and less to give it the effect you want. Use that in combination with the outer ring blur to bring just kind of like a good natural look to it. Okay. Then we have the shrink shadow by. I'm going to be honest, I don't remember what this does. I don't remember even adding it. But basically, it controls how much it shrinks. So as I'm back here, if I change it to like zero, it's like an instant change. It doesn't have any smoothness to it. And if I change it to one, it looks more normal. Five, it basically changes how it kind of interpolates in and out, so to speak. But I'll leave it at that video or that value. It's kind of a good one to blend. Then you have, again, all the same controls over the colors based upon what you have for your reticle. Then you have your reticle size, so like 1.8. It bumps up the size, so on and so on. So that's basically all the controls that you have over the reticle. And you use these kind of to get the result that you want. So in my case, I, let's say I wanted some scope shadow right here. So I'm pretty far away. I'm sorry, I'm pretty close. So I was like, what, maybe here away? What I can do is I can alter it so I want to get some scope shadow. Okay, so 80, or no, 110. So about there, I'm getting some shadow. Let's check it. And there we go. So I'm getting some scope shadow around the edges. And as I move around, you can kind of see this shadow move itself around. You can exaggerate it by going really far back. Fortunately, the warping of, or sorry, the bevel that the uh, lens itself has on it doesn't help to visualize this as it kind of messes with it a bit, but you should get the rough idea from that. So that's how you go through and you tweak up the uh, magnified optic material, or the material instance. So you have control over the eye box, same control that you have with the red dots over the reticle, and you can control the blur around the edge of the reticle or of the uh, glass. So that pretty much sums everything up that I could think of. And yeah, that's going to be all for this video. So I'll see you in the next one.